Hello, I'm Regina Lux, and this is Veritas in the Rocks, and we're going to talk about how to be a successful parent. Just think, all you need to know in a 20-ish minute video. How lucky. I had children young, so when other girls I knew started having children, I was on like my third or fourth, and several anxious messages were shot my way. Young mothers-to-be would confide in me that they were worried they were going to screw up their kids. Oftentimes, they came from rough homes themselves and wanted to give better to their children. Or there was the flip side, where they had fantastic mothers and felt like they could never measure up to them. Their worries included not being able to financially support their children. They might not be able to spend as much time with them as they want. They feared they would mess up educating them properly as babies and toddlers, and their children wouldn't meet milestones. If they wanted to homeschool, they worried about curriculums. They were always so worried they wouldn't measure up and fail as a parent. Then, there were the parents who already had children, and it wasn't what they expected at all. They came crying to me, saying they felt like failures, and that parenthood was nothing how they expected it would be. Here's what most people don't realize at all. You're never ready for anything. You will never be ready to get married. You will never be ready to be a parent. Do you know why? Because we aren't fortune tellers and we don't know what the future brings. That's why. You aren't ready to face tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Everything we do is a risk. And all we can do is draw from our life experiences in order to navigate the next turn. I have no idea where this notion came from, where people were expected to be ready for a new thing, because that's an irrational expectation. You can read tons of books, interview tons of people, but every single person's life and days are different from one another. The only thing you can do is to try to grow in virtues necessary to navigate such territory, such as wisdom, patience, self-control in order to arm yourself with the tools you need to tackle the next thing, while also guarding your own mental, physical, and emotional health. You're never ready for anything. We're never ready for health issues or for someone to die. And you will never be ready to be a parent, because you do not know how much you are going to have to change who you are in order to cater to a new human being, or several, who will likely be very different from you who will likely process information differently, who likely have different sorts of needs. But the one thing that we all need, the one thing that controls so much of who we become and what creates our self-concept is how loved we feel from our parents. I know this is going to be a hard video for the majority of people, simply because of their own upbringing and how their own parents made them feel. I've said time and time again that the core issue within society is the devaluing of human dignity, and much of that is due to the fact that most people cannot genuinely love, and therefore, most people never experience genuine love. Oftentimes, they don't know what to do if they're presented it, and will lash out, as their self-concept, which were formed in their childhood years, tells them that they are not lovable, not truly. Now you're going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know a lot of people who think the world revolves around them. True, there are a lot of self-absorbed jerks out there. I submit to you that oftentimes when people behave that way, it's a defense mechanism, a sort of survival instinct, since they don't feel an honest sense of safety and security. They lash out, trying to convince others they are lovable because they honestly don't believe it themselves. People generally don't offer unconditional, authentic love freely, so most people don't experience it. No. Love is so conditional now. I'm your mother. You have to love me no matter what I do. I'm your spouse. You took a vow to love me no matter how many times I cheat on you. This obligation to force others to love is not genuine. The person doing it doesn't feel genuinely lovable, so they insist others have to through obligation, and the victim of this emotional manipulation is being told they are not worthy of authentic love because they are not treated with dignity. They might think, my mom talks trash about me to other people, so what's so wrong with me that my own mother cannot love me? 
So people lash out and become their own advocates as a means of survival. Or not. Sometimes they kill themselves. Perhaps they were shallowly told they were awesome their whole lives, so they feel an authentic self-entitlement. Here's the truth. We're all entitled in so many ways. They just aren't the same ways. Women will treat their daughters-in-laws like trash because they feel entitled to. Mean girl business owners treat their employees like trash because they feel entitled to. Men treat their wives like trash and throw themselves into porn because their wives don't bother to take care of their bodies, so they feel entitled to look at a woman who does. While these are extreme examples, we all do this on some level, because we are all controlled by the natural desire to succumb to our own emotional wants, namely, loving ourselves and others in a way that cater to what we want, when we want it, and other people should just understand. Oh, but what about the coping mechanisms? The people who somehow become over 600 pounds. They aren't the people who think they're awesome. The women who go out drinking every weekend in the hopes of a hookup, despite what they might insist, they hate who they are and feel a sense of worthlessness that no one chooses to be with them beyond the momentary gratification they can offer. People like this reduce themselves and find ineffective and dangerous coping mechanisms. Why? because they don't feel like they are worthy of love. So this brings us back to the original topic. What do you need to be a good parent? Yes, it is all tied together. Because broken children become broken adults. And a lot of broken adults are breeding and want better for their children. What I tell people who anxiously speak with me about it is that they must ask themselves three things about their babies and children. Here's what I want you to remember. These three things in this order are the most important things you can do as a parent. You want to set up your child for success? Here's the secret sauce. First, are they safe? Meaning, are they physically secure and likely not to be harmed? This is a big thing for new parents. They will usually enthusiastically answer, yes, they are safe, I keep them safe. Good, now let's move on. Two, are they loved? What? What do you mean? Of course I love my child. I would do anything for them. I'd lay down on railroad tracks for them if I had to. Well and good. The final question is far trickier. Do they know they are loved? I want to give you a moment to let that one sink in. Does your child know that you love them? Well, yes, of course. Why wouldn't they? Okay, Think back on the times when you didn't feel loved by your parents. I'm sure there are several. I know there are several people who are watching this, remembering several times, because our society is filled with broken adults. And that begins in the home. So think back on a time like that without dwelling too long and upsetting yourself. Now, in that moment, you knew your parents who were treating you like that in that moment. You knew that they had that kind of deep parental love for you, where they would be devastated if anything happened to you. But they weren't loving to you. They didn't make you feel loved. They treated you poorly. Now think about how many times that happened. How many times you were snapped at, purposefully shamed, your parents publicly sharing your shame with others, which now is even more rampant with social media. Did you feel loved in that moment? even with the logical conclusion that, of course, your parents still love you. Now, do you get it? So when I ask these parents, do they know they are loved? I'm asking you if you're exuding that love to them. I'm asking if they look at you and feel secure in your love. I'm asking you if you're making their existence feel filled with meaning because you smile when you see them and make them feel like the most important person in the world because your spouse and your children ought to be your world. When children realize that they aren't the level of importance in their parents' life that they ought to be, it changes them, it harms them, and it makes them harm themselves, whether physically or through dangerous coping mechanisms. So if you behave in a way that reinforces to your child that you not only love them, but they are worthy of that love, that will navigate them into a secure future, 
where they make good decisions, grow in virtue, and don't allow others to treat them poorly, such as getting into abusive relationships. You weren't abusive to them, so why would they think people abusing them is normal? They learn that they are worthy of being loved and shouldn't put up with abuse. Now, because this video is about parenting, there's something I need to point out. Discipline is necessary to raise up good people. People oftentimes think discipline is at odds with showing your child you love them. No, it's not. The truth is that you cannot truly prepare your child for the world in the most loving way if you do not first mold them into a good human being. There's a big movement called gentle parenting, where it seems most of those parents are against disciplining their child since it could emotionally harm them. I've noticed a correlation between children who act like monsters and parents who refuse to discipline them. Do you think it's loving to unleash into the world a person who has no respect for authority or other people? Someone who gets away with whatever they want because their parents never disciplined them out of fear? How is unleashing a monster into the world going to make it a better place? We've got enough adults who are broken and self-centered. A lapse in proper loving discipline has the same outcome as a broken adult. They are just broken in other ways. Oftentimes they just learn that they can do as they please, abuse their parents and siblings, and they ought to get away with whatever they'd like because their parents are afraid to discipline them because they are afraid that discipline will make them feel unloved. But discipline is necessary to create a loving home environment and raise healthy children. Does that mean smacking your child? No. Every child is different and needs to be redirected in a way that reinforces their human worth. And that is a difficult task in parenting. Do you know why that's so difficult? Because parents need virtues, such as patience, love, and self-control, in order to discipline their children in a way that won't make them feel unloved. Those virtues are tested daily, not only for parents. Teaching your children boundaries is so extremely important. Giving them healthy expectations and not giving in to every whim they want is so important. It's those lessons that shape who they are. It's those lessons that teach them how to view themselves and others. You cannot expect someone to know their worth and the worth of others if no one tells them. The reality is that you are going to release your children into the world and they will be amongst other adult children who were not raised well. You need to give them the proper understanding of their worth. So when someone else's broken kid tries to tear yours down, your kid doesn't believe it because they know their innate worth and they will be less likely to be affected and they will find safety and security when they draw on the love of their parents when they draw on how wanted and valued they were. Maybe you're an adult who can't say that they had that, and I'm sorry. The best I can tell you is that if you have children, you can break the cycle, and you will become empowered by breaking that cycle and giving to your children what you needed. It's so important to be your child's safe place, Every day, I hold each of my children and I whisper to them how lucky I am to have them and how happy they make me and how much I love them. I whisper to them that I'm their safe place and I'll always be there for them. If I haven't shown my children they are valuable just by virtue of being human, then I failed. There's so much pressure on parents of young children now. People are waiting later and later to have children because they are reaching vainly for a way to be ready. We already know that readiness never comes. We are told that we have to have the best in baby equipment. We have to know everything. And if we don't, then we are failing. But the truth of the matter is that the most important thing you can give your child is a sense of their worth. And it's the important ingredient that is missing from our society. People have been having children to fit them into their lives. Children are treated like burdens or accessories. Mothers are told they need to be everything and have it all in order to be successful. Stop it. Stop all of it. Those three things I said 
are the most important. And if you do nothing else, your child will still be more blessed to have you as a parent than most other children. Are they safe? Are they loved? Do they know they are loved? Those questions become even more important when you have teenagers. The good news is that if you've laid a foundation of making your child feel loved through your own practicing and necessary virtues, it's easier when they get older. Do you know how difficult it is to treat a child like an accessory? Then when they become teenagers, try to convince them that you know what's best for them. When you didn't make them feel safe and secure and loved, you've subconsciously reinforced in them that you aren't to be trusted especially when it comes to their emotional validation. It's really difficult to prove to someone you love them when they don't usually feel loved by you. Families will be what restores society. People learning how to love by finding motivation to be virtuous. Spouses loving one another and showing their children a healthy relationship. Parents encouraging their children to love and respect one another, beginning when they are toddlers. Showing your children healthy boundaries and molding them with discipline. When someone feels loved, they feel secure. They thrive in that security because they haven't a need for coping mechanisms. And your child will be happy. They will be virtuous. They will make the world a better place because you were their parents. Parents, be not afraid. The world needs you. Now, ignite the truth and boldly go.